here to prevent, but don't worry, if you even have the condition, we're here to manage it. Hmm? With a nutritionist in the house, that is uh, uh, Christine and uh, Sharon, uh, they are going to be giving us the right information on how best we can manage peptic ulcer disease. I'll start with uh, Christine and her being the general secretary for the Allied Nutritionist uh, Association. Association. Yes. You're welcome, Christine. Thank you very much. Greetings yes. to my viewers. Uh, yes, I'm honored to be here. And um, on Bethan Health, yes, yes, I'm a nutritionist, a freelance nutritionist, but also uh, working as a general secretary for the Allied Nutrition Association. So Gee. if you want <laughs> contacts of nutrition, <laughs> you okay? Come. That's good. Yes. Let me first go to Sharon. Sharon, yes. are you proud of being a nutritionist? Is it worked for you? Do you eat, uh, I wouldn't say eating well, because in Uganda, if we say eating well, people think of eh, pizza and all yeah. those things, but do you eat right? Absolutely. Okay, welcome my viewers on the show. Um, hello viewers, a good evening to you all. My name is Sharon, naturally, and I'm so happy to be here, and I hope you have a very good evening and good fun. Thank you. We're going to have a very nice evening. Um, Sharon, I'm sorry, Christine. Um, yes. You're so passionate about nutrition, mm -hmm. and uh, you being a nutritionist, it's like you chose, how can I say, something that you're very passionate about, mm -hmm. yeah? In your um, practice, have you come across people that complain of ulcers? Uh, yes, I have come across several patients mm -hmm. with the complaints of ulcers. Okay, with... Um, they come presenting symptoms um, like diarrhea, uh, you know, cramping, gas and bloating, sometimes constipation. Mm -hmm. And uh, over time, I have come to discover that some of these patients are not aware that they need nutrition advice or they need tips from the nutritionist. Oh. So I have, the reason I'm here is to create awareness but so, you know, it's a, a, an illness mm. okay, that requires, you know, a team to work together to handle it. Okay, no, thank you so yeah. much. And Abatulaba Ndoza Abasinga Kufe, at one point, Ndemugamba Abasinga, because uh, I would say Mubantu Kumi, eh? But anyway, yes. to complaining. ulcers to complaining ulcers. Oluto nerukuluma ulcers. ulcers. No gamba ulcers. No ulcers. So twa chitwala okubanga chili common everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Now you want a good nutrition sport, we want to make sure that uh, we can seize the song if it's a song of ulcers and also people feeling very uncomfortable because of the ulcers. So Sharon, you come to angalia yungaya gala kumanya peptic ulcer disease. Tuina ulcers nyenji nyo leitu limukulaba peptic ulcer disease. O inza chimu nyonyo lotia. Well, peptic ulcer disease um, peptic ulcer as peptic ulcer edi a causing bacteria shooter H. pyroli. It's a bacteria. Then you're seventy five percent causing by that. Mm. And then in an cause and rich data, which are uh well drugs that we turn meds is causing is causing a peptic ulcers. So what happens during peptic ulcers? So in a Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Thank you. gastric, mm. upper pain. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I was a bad Jacob was all but look on money. Okay, I'm not so more or gamble, look or look, no numa. No mobuza, Lukuluma, no but or numa. Cutting a letter, so senior in your land to look at all the partitions as in Jaulo, a double side a better nature. Chayo. So Sharon, you were garment to in a gastric, and then we have the, you know, Denu is all one say Z. 
zira gibwa mgeri ya njaulo, yes. symptoms ziba za njaulo. Yes. Ziba za njaulo, tutandike ni ulcers wezo wansi. Is that duoden? Is yes. That duoden? Now duoden no ulcers, o zira botia. Ebisele visinga duoden no ulcers. Symptom pain yeyo, jiba ulida. Echeda ku happening two, uh, like two to three hours after a meal. Two to three? After a meal, meaning yo, actually pain yeyo is getting stimulated by hunger. Ida mtu wa malo kulia meringa mm. kakana. Yisele bisinga. Mm. Na yate gastric, gastric ulcers zinimu. Uolie mele ate zitabuka. Ezo wansi uolie mele. O kakana. Go on. Uolie o kawe wevu. Hey. Kawe wevu. Oh, oh, yes. Chokate so, za wagule za gastric. Uolie mele like 20 to 30 minutes. Tani kwa kulida pain. After mm. it, irrespective of which kind of yes. food you've eaten. Mm. 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 Okay, so that is about the pain. Eyo wansi wetuli emede, tuba, okay, tufuna muka relief. Eyo wagulu, it's the other way around. Yes, I know. Do we have any other manifestations apart from the alternating kind of pain? Oh, okay, the other manifestation can be gas, like the stomach mm. is, you're feeling full. You haven't eaten, but you're feeling full. Oh. So which also is that a yawansi or a yawagulu? Okay, that one is a yawansi. And most times also it comes as, it manifests as constipation. Like you go two to three days without going to the, to the toilet. So um, uh, this, they, they differ because, uh, they, okay, the mechanism, the mechanisms of the food mm. at different levels of the GIT. Mm. are different. He, the gastric, uh, I mean ulcers, you know, it's, it is working with the, the secretion of the gastric. Mm -hmm. And usually the gastric, it manifests when there is heartburn and also gastric reflux. For example, you're feeling pain going up mm -hmm. and you try, even sometimes you're feeling that bitter taste in the mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's actually coming back. However, the other side, it's going down, and the, <coughs> the, you see, the symptoms are actually affecting the lower part of the GIT. Okay. Maybe yeah. to add on that, do they know ulcers? Most times they manifest, um, their pain manifests at night, in most cases. If you see a patient coming, and remember, it mostly pain in Juli that you know. Then the other ones, gastric, mm -hmm. instead of manifesting at night. Over, okay, because it's the way I'm going to go to the toilet. Because it was manifesting actually simply because the tunnel there. Because two games in two to three hours after eating. Yes. Yes. Yeah. At those hours, what you have, say, sing a song away, but see. Okay, there is also something you mentioned that Zire Tewa Kauka Ketuita H. pyroli. So, bacteria. the bacteria. Oftentimes, we've seen patients or people go into the hospital and then they are Kong sure, or maybe against the internet in so many of gamba So they are very assured that they have ulcers. Mm. So if they go into the hospital and then they tell them you are supposed to do this kind of test, mm. they don't buy it. Like they they are like I have ulcers, so why do this other yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, test yeah. and later have the ulcers? Yeah. So Christine is your a question. Okay, um okay, not all the pain comes as a result of ulcers. Uh, there are many other conditions, there are many other conditions, for example, the IBS, it's called irritable bowel syndrome, and that condition also manifests, the same, it has the same symptoms as what we call ulcers. So with IBS, it's just that, like, your bowel is not functioning as it should, like the colon, the colon, the last part of your intestine, is not actually contracting as it should and eventually it causes you pain um, sometimes gasp and bloating and also even constipation and on many occasions some also some diarrhea yeah so um for when you you come with such a condition such a complaint in the hospital mm. and you explain to the doctor they are actually the <laughs> they do their diagnosis based on the, on the symptoms and the, the different diagnoses that mm. we, we mm. have. 
for us as it's just having to test the H. pylori. If it is reactive, then it's confirmed that you have ulcers. However, not all the time when you come and ha have that test, if it is negative and you're still feeling some kind of discomfort, maybe the doctor will go ahead and do further investigations. And uh, to some extent, maybe you can do a, a colonoscopy to know that, to, to see if your bowel is moving wow. well. Thank you so much. I can think. Can I add a um, Yes. Um, uh, she has talked about irritable bowel syndrome. And in most cases, really, we have found out that most people don't actually have ulcers. Mm. That's the condition they have. It's uh, sensitivity, oversensitivity, hypersensitivity of the, of the intestines. Mm. And you find out that in most cases, people get such a reactions during festive seasons. When okay. they eat a lot, after, I do realize that after festive season, people, the hospitals are flooded. Yeah, because No, most people call it actually food poisoning, but it's actually not. Because you're eating different varieties of food that has, that have seasonings in them, that oh. have, yes, that have uh, some foods you're sensitive mm. to them. Yes. You end up getting, reacting differently, and then you call it ulcer. But it's not actually. But it's not ulcers. Yes. I think that's why she said, um, you know, mm. you test it to confirm yeah. whether ulcers. Mm. But of course, uh, the most interesting bit here is how do I prevent? I mm. know everyone is waiting for how do I you know, <laughs> yeah. prevent prevent this. But we've seen people presenting with all these kinds of symptoms. Mm. And most of them, they'll tell you, me if I eat, they'll go. Or most of them, you've talked about constipation, and I feel like people didn't know that constipation is a part of, like if you get constipation, mm. it's maybe a sign or a symptom that you're having what? Ulcers. Mm. So, and we believe doctors or um, medics out there sometimes they'll tell you me i can go ahead to treat clinically mm -hmm. without doing the tests yeah. as long as you tell me the symptoms i can rule out that it's ulcers and i can go straight away and then there are those that go an extra mile and want to test so like i said we want to look at the preventive not the treatment part of it. Okay. So in both scenarios, someone is being tested, someone is not being tested, but they're almost presenting with the same signs and symptoms that point to ulcers. Yeah. How do we go about that? There is pain? There is pain, for example. Let's start with the pain. Okay. I'll talk about food sensitivities, because as a nutritionist, I've come across with a number, a number of patients, uh, they have been diagnosed, okay, ulcers have been, okay, H, H. pylori has been reactive and the doctor goes ahead to prescribe antibiotics and some other drugs and this patient still feels the discomfort after completing that dose. Now what happens usually is that when you have the drugs, you're, you're treating other illness, but there are other triggers. Hmm. We are looking at other triggers. And basically, food triggers that are related to food, um, like she, Sharon just said, different individuals react to different foods. Different individuals? Yes. Okay. For example, if you are, for example, you consider having. For example, you may not know that you even have IBS, but you also have ulcers, y you get. Now with IBS, you are going to look at the triggers. What triggers your GIT to get disorganized? Hmm. And uh, you, there you really need to consult. If you have this, you feel a discomfort and it is continuous, you need to talk to a nutritionist. and. For example, if you have been treated on many occasions mm. and you're not feeling any relief, 
Mm. You sh surely need to examine your food. If you've been treated and you don't feel any relief. Yes. The symptoms are not going. Or oh, they keep on coming. Or oh, they keep, it, it actually just have recurrent pain. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you need to go ahead and go, go to a doctor and tell him, no, you see, I am not getting better, even with, actually, most doctors give the best treatment, but you find some patients don't feel better. Even after the treatment. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, now this, that is the, the other part of prevention, making sure that you are you are aware of what triggers your pain. So you need to do a food. Yes, it's a food called like a, a food diary. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Have yeah. a food diary. You're supposed to start to record what you eat. Like personally. Uh huh. Um, I used to get some trigger. I like uh, I used to every time I could eat honey and fish. <laughs> honey, I could get stomach ache. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could get stomach ache every time I used to eat honey and then also fish, this bowl, this tilapia. And I, I didn't know why. So I had to take note and I was like, maybe I'm, my, I'm sensitive, my stomach is sensitive to this kind of food. Mm. Yes. So you stopped them? Yes. So if you have, if you're that type, you need to have a food diary. Mm. You record wow. every food item that you ate at what time. Such that when you feel you, the, the time comes, you start eliminating. When you feel that the pain is not going, mm. start eliminating certain foods. Mm. And eventually, sometimes you find that it, it has worked for some of the patients. So it could be that the pain is not the ulcers. The ulcers. Mm. Okay. Then the, the other mm. cause mm. of, okay, the other prevention, part of the prevention is to maintain good sanitation. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you know bacteria the way uh, yes. you know water you know you have to mind the source of your water you also need to mind that you know making sure that you use soap at all times to make sure that okay if it is bacterial infection or whatever mm -hmm. you break the cycle of the oh, okay you control the contamination, mm. whether it's, it's in your kitchen or wherever, because bacteria, it, it is, comes through the food, from the fecal material, mm. I hope, uh, yes, fecal material, to the mouth. And you, also, you just have to break the, that cycle mm. where the bacteria can easily get into your gut. There is also something I really want us to understand. I, I know we're going to go into what am I supposed to eat, what am I not supposed to eat, if I'm already diagnosed into nina ulcers, which is a inoculia, a table in basizina, so we'll So we're going to get into that bit. But I think we also say that, okay, someone might come and they're like, I have ulcers, like nina ulcers. So I feel it's too general or kugamat nina ulcers. Although those suggest to me that in Sharon may she say heartburn over was it heartburn something like that. Although I'm trying to heartburn over the feeling of pain here or maybe it's in the stomach and they'll be just like those are ulcers. But and then we've seen a worst case scenario or mutunga a full of me probably come like maybe blood and they're like okay that's also ulcers. So a proper description. Now we're not talking of peptic ulcer disease, but ulcer as ulcer. Mm -hmm. How do I now stand to say and to just say, you know, the ulcer, the ulcer are they the symptoms that we manifest with until uh, maybe I have constipation, chinkwata, or butolun zimba. Mm -hmm. Is that the ulcer? Okay, uh, in medical terms, we, we say ulcer, an ulcer is just a lesion on the stomach lining. It's a lesion. It can be okay. Actually, it's just caused by, caused by inflammation. Actually, the, the GIT is just inflamed. It, it may not, some people say, I something like that. Yes. Yeah. You know, the general terms they use, they like, they, it sounds so bad. For example, when you have someone has blood, in their stool, it, 
it looks so bad and it's scary. So oh. the doctor, usually, you, unless you have had info, the information from the doctor, <laughs> you cannot say that I have a wound oh. in my GIT. You get it. Okay, I but think that makes sense. What I can add on her is that in medical, in, uh, okay, in the health sector, we do not assume, yes, we, prove, we don't work on assumptions. They are proven. Yes. So Even that means also a patient shouldn't. Yeah, because there are many gastrointestinal <laughs> disorders. Yeah, you're right. We have gastritis, right. mm. we have uh, IBS, we have, you've mentioned, mm, uh, yes. peptic ulcers. There are many. So they are treated differently. So mm. you cannot jump on a conclusion because you've gotten some blood spotted, you know. You have to be diagnosed and yes. Mm. Thank you so much, Christine, and thank you so much, uh, Sharom. I uh, just like she says that you have to be diagnosed. So let me assume that most of us have gotten the proper diagnosis that yes, you've done the test and maybe it came out positive and you are told you're having ulcers. So you're wondering, how am I going to live the rest of my life? Do they even heal? Do they do this and this? And some of us totally. Um, in uh, uh, particular kinds of beliefs where they will tell you um, so we want to look at all those kinds of things can it help with the ulcers and any other kind of uh, proper information that we can get nutrition wise I believe like I said earlier most of us have had these kinds of complaints uh, we've had pains we've had bloating we've had anusia uh, we've ended up even vomiting we've had constipation and uh, name it and many other kinds of symptoms that you can mention and mo uh, most of us we have maybe gone to the hospital been diagnosed we've even done the h pyroly test and we're like now this is typical ulcer but we believe there are measures of managing and also treating those ulcers and you get well completely so we want to look at the lifestyle changes that we can uh, have to make sure that we manage the ulcers but also we want to address the uh, bit of fasting because some people are like then um, ulcers so i want us to get to understand oxibane ulcers how are they related i think it's like ulcers eating antibiotalia is ulcers i think that's how we know it but we've been explained uh, to us by our nutritionist that Sometimes it's not like that. You can eat and get pain. You cannot eat. Sometimes you can not eat and then you're okay. So if you want to be a part of this, the number is going to be over your screen. I request my producer to put the number on the screen. And uh, you can go on our website, www.bethantv.ug, or you can go on YouTube and Facebook, Bethan TV Uganda. So to you, Christine, about the issue of fasting, and then after we're going to go into the lifestyle yes. changes. Yes, welcome back. Uh, dear viewers, um, fasting is uh, okay. In general terms, fasting is going for many hours without food. And of course, we are Christians, and we uh, we are obliged to to fast to nourish our souls. <laughs> I mean, and also, you know, as we nourish our bodies. So what I'm saying, our uh, fasting, if you you fasting may not be the cause of ulcers although some people say that ah, because of fasting you have the what the ulcers we have looked at the causes of ulcers it's not, um, you know it is uh, the gastric uh, secretions and maybe other other causes but if you intend to fast to avoid discomfort after you have broken your fast it's it's uh, it's advisable that you try to eat your okay eat well so that your body is well nourished as before you start your fast mm. make sure that you're well hydrated before you start your fast and then when you do it you go into the fasting that means that your GIT is going to be resting it's going to be resting there are no gastric secretions there are no enzymes that are active mm. that means that once you you want to break your fast. You really have to watch your food. Do not actually 
eat the food that will worsen the gastric secretion. And this information you can only get it if you consulted someone who has knowledge, a nutritionist, on the different foods that may be, <coughs> the, okay, that may cause you trouble. So the whole point is, before I plan my fasting, I should eat well. <laughs> yes. Okay, now I understand. And now makes sense, really. So, cut to know the day because you made a mutina ulcers. For starters, be a tiny apulia. A visible or qualifying these ulcers into when the ashenish catch a mede, she jack was So, what are some of those foods that we should avoid? Yes, um, a number of foods. Uh, foods that have high, a lot of sugar, sucrose. Mm -hmm. Yes. Foods like? Like she just said, the honey. Processed foods, even. And hey, then okay. there's also processed there's foods. citrus fruits. There are also citrus fruits. And, and uh, okay, the foods that may have like acid. You remember you you're dealing with the gastric juice mm -hmm. in the stomach that also acid. So you have to try to have to eliminate, actually not avoid, but go slow. You reduce reduce on those foods that may have high amounts of acid. Because examples of that. Food? Examples uh, we have oranges, we have lemons. Actually, my experience with my clients, I. Sometimes when they come and they're like, oh, I have been treated on several months and I don't seem to see the relief. Mm. And then when I examine their diet, I just find that they are squeezing a lemon every day in their tea in their or in their juice, mm. in their water. Mm. So sometimes others may say, okay, lemon doesn't cause me any trouble. Mm. Others will say, oh, you know, I can't, like she just said, with honey, there are those who cannot, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. taste honey because as you, as soon as you put it in your stomach, there is some kind of discomfort. Those are short carbon yes. chain uh, mm. carbohydrates. Yes, as she has termed it. Mm. <laughs> I hope uh, our audience <laughs> can can get that term. But yeah. it's just making sure that you have you avoid some kind, some types of carbohydrates, like she just said. And also you try to have food that are less fibrous. Okay. When we talk of fibrous, it means if it, the, the body, I mean, the GIT might have to get irritated, get irritated during mm. the digestion because mm. they really have to break the down oh, when the food is being broken down. Mm. And that could also could cause, you know, so going slow on these other foods might make you feel better. So, and if for, if for example, if you're doing the fasting, you also have to make sure that you try to eat soft food. Okay, if or you're doing the what fasting. we call a bland, maybe if you can Google and say a bland diet, what does a bland diet say? Mm -hmm. The diet that does not have flavor, no smell, you know? No, no spices. No mm -hmm. spices. <laughs> so until you, you feel that you, are, you, you, are, you have healed, because ulcers heal. Yeah, okay, yeah. Although I've met people who say, and the zangete zuona, na yenga ulcers zuona, as long as you've been treated, the doc, you've been treated, and then you, you adjust on your lifestyle mm. so habits. It's, I, I, okay, anyway, as you're mentioning, is, uh, initially you said uh, they should have a food diary, like whereby someone has to write that I ate this uh, particular food and this is how my body reacted. So, and now she's mentioning a number of uh, kinds of foods, uh, those that are in, uh, having less fiber, those that have acids, those that are more in carbohydrates and all that. So should we, you know, um, looking at NCDs, I would say maybe for example, mm. diabetes and mm. hypertension, we usually do what we uh, have. You guys have what we, you call a diabetic plate. Mm. Should we also say that uh, if someone has ulcers, they should go ahead and have 
an ulcer kind of plate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or are they supposed to have a meal plan? Or yes, uh, a meal plan is necessary. If you have, yeah, although it comes at a cost, if you need, meet a nutritionist. Eh, hey, it comes yeah. at a cost, it was the twins of Tagala cost. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I'm looking at someone, mm. a Tali Muhaban setting, I wouldn't mm. say Kampala, because anyway, yeah, there are some of us that can afford, there are some of us that can't afford. Yeah. But I'm looking at someone that cannot afford even to see a nutritionist. Maybe they do not have money, but they can use this program to get the knowledge and mm -hmm. be able to manage okay. their ulcers. Mm -hmm. So, nti sisobola kutula wakane ne kolera plani ya anga kubishibia nino kulia, nchino nino chikeendeza, chino unja chiria nyo, oba chino uwe nchiria, nchirira kona chino. Anyway, just like you see Uganda, all move every year. We are going to be to Ina. Yeah, true. We are going to be to Bijanja. All of them are going to be to Ina. We are going to be to Ina. Ataja kuga manze. We are going to be to Bijanja. All of them are going to be to Ina. So, we mean the zero one. We are to be to Ina. How best can we utilize those, and they do not cause harm to us. Sure. So, uh, I would add on what she said. Basically, when you when you're looking at ulcers, you're looking at uh, there's a higher concentration, an imbalance in gastric concentration, and with the the, the mucosa, there is a protection layer that protects the mucosa cells that are supposed to secrete the mucus. Now there's an imbalance, so meaning that you have to limit the foods that produce the acids that give out acids. Those are the foods I need. Yes. Those are the, because now, I um, of touch together that have to limit the foods that cause the over secretion and all that. So just help us understand that they are best foods. Mm a bit genuine when you know katale njakugula lumonde njakugula matoke njakugula mboga inanasi which you're not allowed to gain there are those normal normal foods mm. and for some reason most of us take them and you know they just eat mm. so now, i can talk about beans some beans cause bloating and that bloating can result into inflammation at some point some people but again as i could i don't want to restrict someone because you today you you may have ulcers and I also have ulcers, but we may react differently to different kinds of foods. Mm. You understand? So there is nothing like, don't do this mm. for everybody. Okay. Yes, you have to have, as we mentioned yeah. earlier, it's supposed to be a food uh, diary. Note down the kinds of foods that give you um, irritation whenever you eat them. You understand? Yes, you note them down mm. and then you eliminate, start eliminating so mm. you know mm. the foods that are mm. maybe making you uncomfortable, mm. yes. then you? You eliminate. For example, you can say, oh, yesterday I am feeling uncomfortable, <laughs> maybe I ate a pineapple. Then you say, okay, let me try, you know, try avoiding it for a few days and see because how I pineapple feel. Pineapples also have high You, you understand. Mm. Then you, it's, uh, you can, because I've seen people who say, okay, when I eat potatoes, I have a running stomach. Yeah. Mm. But then um, another person says, when I eat posho, all oh, ulcers become too much. And then when it comes to matoke. matoke, people say, ah, no, I won't eat matoke because it gives me ulcers. However, there are also other people who have ulcers and they will eat matoke and they feel mm. they are okay. Mm. They are okay. So you really have, you individually have to look at your food. If you have so, ulcers, start with listing every food that you eat every day. Okay, so th so this is okay. <laughs> you are saying that this mm. is a bit personal. Yes. Chili kumuntungo muntu. So tetuja gama tetu tete temuli abijanja lo temuli amatoke temuli ashino kuanga buliomo bimukola bianja ulo. So okay, now we in a family. Mm. <laughs> We in a family and uh, maybe of five people. Nenga muli mwa bantu. Babidi. Baina ulcers. Yeah. And sometimes, musetingi ya fabamu wano muyuganda. Tetue jala vya nyo. Ntengina kufumba shini chikache mele na shino na shino na shino na shino. Yes. Yeah. Maybe utu inzo kugamba leru tuli na kaunga ne bijanjalo na matoke. Mbali leru tuli na vinyewa ne bijanjalo ya mm. um, kaunga and matoke or something like that. But now these other two people, by mm. now, because those are the complaints, and for some reason, people keep feeling like that. But again, I never and things keep worsening yeah. and worsening. Mm. And yet, mm. we can have better solutions mm. at their disposal in mm. their comfort at mm. home. Yes. So, Omutali was setting 
boeto what other options should we look at reducing the portions and kalebo bobange binyebwa bikuisa bwe bitya tenga family tegenda kuchusa akanyebwa ali ako katono obe mm. wasiga donye wa mm. what are those options that we should have at hand mm -hmm. before looking for the nutrition needs because we have you here so you giving us the knowledge yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. what are the options oh, first of all me i would like to encourage uh, our viewers that, uh, you know to be okay to if you have a, a patient, feel, you know, feel for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, if during your preparation, meal preparation, have a consideration of your, the members in your household. How do they feel? So she was going to Okay. 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 In our households, they are well fed. Yeah. Um, the sick, the children, the women, and the elderly, those are the most vulnerable people. And sometimes when we are preparing meals, we ignore, tend to ignore them. Their preferences and their physiological needs. Hmm. All these things we need to put in consideration True. when we are preparing meals. So if you have, for example, you have two people in your household and they have ulcers, perhaps maybe you have you have heard about okay this info you have got this information. Please try to adjust to meals that are friendly to these members of to the, the members of okay. But in any case, if, um, if someone is watching us and uh, they feel like it's not sinking in, like you feel like you're not um, mm. <laughs> convinced, we're not here to convince you anyway. Mm. We're just here to just give you the information. So encourage your, maybe your mother, your caretaker to always watch the nutrition sport. And we discuss a number of things, mm. especially if it comes to how you are supposed to eat. I started saying that uh, as Beth and TV, we're putting a lot of emphasis on the preventive measures. We're looking at actually mm -hmm. preventive medicine. That's why we shall talk about your habits, your lifestyle, and a number of things. And uh, we're believing that uh, through nutrition, we can transform our lives. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we encourage stress management. So talk about stress management. We've gone to hospitals over the time and we've been told ulcers or even other conditions, NCDs, where were they stressing? And someone will tell you so to to stress. But then for some reason we feel like it's a trigger to these yes. kinds of ulcers. Mm -hmm. So uh Sharon, how do we go about stress as a trigger in uh, peptic ulcer disease? Well, um how we go about stress? Get time for meditation. Okay. Yes. Uh, relax do some exercises yes they may not be uh, strenuous exercises they may be uh, like stretching in the morning you, you you go out get some free time listen to some music read some books okay relax your mind yes because sometimes it's actually uh, <laughs> as I've said apart from the ulcers when we talk about the IBS which also has the same symptoms as ulcers sometimes it results from the damaging of the connection between the brain and the gut. So you have to focus more on yourself. When you have a lot of workload, create time for yourself because at the end of the day, it's about you. Yes. Mm. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're encouraging an active lifestyle yes. and mm. basically self-care. And actually, the thing that I forgot to talk about, apart from exercises, you have to also as, as you say that people who have a lot of stress, I guess, as they are at risk of having ulcers, and uh, also people who have taking alcohol. Oh, yes. Okay. People who are smoking. smoking. People who are, this, we have these antidepressant drugs and the painkillers that hmm. we mostly take when you have cramps, and most of those are triggers to ulcers. Yes. 
So if someone gets to know that they have ulcers, they should avoid yes. all those kinds of things. Mm. And then to someone that doesn't have ulcers, should they also really forego? Yeah. Because we want to prevent meanwhile. Yes. As he, we're here to manage, but we want, we are managing, but we want to. Yeah. We want to, to, to do it. Yeah, we want to prevent mm. the yeah. ulcers. And then the other, oh, the other, you know, lifestyle habits that most people are not aware of is using straws. Huh? Using straws. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yes, whatever you're drinking and you're using a straw, you're sucking in air. Yes, so that also triggers. Because it's bloating. Yeah, bloating the yeah. Yes, and eventually it's gas and bloating and then inflammation and everything. We might not go into the first of the zero job. <laughs> <laughs> bloating and ulcers and oh, secretion yeah. of acids and all that maybe in our other next show but i want to appreciate the nutrition rehabilitation center they are doing a great job to making sure that we have these kinds of experts with us in the studios of bethan tv to teach us to inform us to educate us but remember information is it can be um, power to you when you use it actually but if we come here and speak and you don't do a thing you continue smoking you continue taking your alcohol you continue taking your NSAIDs uh, you continue taking your antidepressants and any other things like mm -hmm. that I've said you continue eating any healthy trust me it will not mm -hmm. benefit you in any way but we believe we can make a very very great impact on our lives and also the lives of other people allow me at this point of time have my nutritionists give their parting shots as we are uh, end the show. I'll start with you, Kristen. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, Beth and TV, for this information. And thank you for partnering with our members, uh, our Allied Nutrition Association. For us, we are here to educate you, to serve you hmm. for better health. Thank you. Welcome. If they fail to receive the knowledge, they'll pay in the clinical room. Yeah. Yes, Sharon. Um, I also want to appreciate you for inviting us today. It's an honor and I'm really glad because I know we can make a change. Yes. Yes, prevention is mm. better than cure. Mm. Many people are suffering because of it. they don't know what to do. They don't know what to eat. But the, if they could only change their lifestyles, maybe something could be better. It, if they could only change. Yes. <laughs> you know, our nutritionists are like pastors, like preachers. <laughs> <laughs> If, oh. Like she's mentioned it, if you could only oh. change your lifestyle, mm. we, you can make this world a better place, mm. really, if you mm. change your lifestyle. And mm. lifestyle is about so many things, not about how you eat, but they've talked about the smoking, the, uh, taking alcohol, and there's so many other things. Mm. Uh, actually, it's all about behavior change. So sit down, find time, and look into yourself and see how best you can improve your life. So as Beth and TV, we have a number of programs to educate us, to inform us. Uh, if, if, if you're looking uh, for educative programs, we have health and wellness on Saturday at 8 p.m. We're talking health. And uh, on Friday on Arise Woman, we're talking about self-care. So these things are very, very important to uh, keep us in check, to put in a place of... Um, this is what you're really supposed to do. <laughs> but go ahead and subscribe on our social media as Betha and TV Uganda on YouTube and like our Facebook page. You can also check out our website, mm -hmm. www.bethaintv.ug. You can also go ahead and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I want to appreciate the one and only Madam Producer Becky. And to the rest of you, the viewers, have a good night.